So today we're going to talk about heat strips here and you see these are the heating elements. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to install this thing first. This is an old train bay heater. I'm going to go ahead and install it in this area right here. You can see there's a baffle plate that they use for certain certain sizes of these heaters. Some of them didn't need the baffle, some of them need a baffle. And I think some of them actually needed two baffles. I'm not positive on that, I'm going off memory. The heater is installed. There's four screws, one here, here, behind this electrical connector, and behind the Molex plug is another screw. And once you mount it in place, and the blower is in place, you'll put this Molex plug and plug it to the plug that they have coming from the blower control and you'll wire the high voltage. This one's too short, but usually the electrician does that. He'll wire the high voltage either over the top, down through here and into this electrical connector, or through the front of the air handler, right through here. And it'll come in and mate with these reds and with these blacks here, which are both legs of power. Taking a closer look, you can see that there is a contactor here. This is a contactor I've actually replaced because the other one was really, really bad off. I just did a video on that contactor and it just needed to be replaced. The heat kit is aged, so I didn't want to put something in there with this sort of relay or it looked pretty far gone. You can see there's lugs. If you remember from that video, I say how I like the lugs on these. I think it's a better connection. So I just took the spades off of these and put them into each lug as they were on the previous contactor. And then on the other side, you have the same thing. Two lugs. On either side of the contactor, you have a white here, which is going to be your W signal for the supplemental heat. And then you have a blue, which is going to be your common. They don't necessarily have to be those colors, but it can be those colors. You'll have to check and see. You can check with your voltmeter and test against the other hots to see which one is the common and which one is the uh, actual hot or W1 signal. You'll see all these spade connectors here put in. Those are going to go to the elements on the other side and to the fuses. We're going to take a look at those right now after we look at this, which is going to be our limit switch right here. You can see that is the limit switch right there. And you can see it says L155-40. So that should be a 155 degree limit. And it probably resets when it drops 40 degrees. I have the blower behind me here. And you can see this is an example of a Molex plug. This is not the one in question. The one in question is, let's see, up here on top. Let's see if I can get my light on it. That is the Molex plug that goes to the actual heat kit. And again, we're talking about the plug that's right here. As you can see here, these are the elements for the heat kit separated by insulators. At the base of these elements, right there at the top of the screen, you also have some fusible links that are one-time fuses.